Welcome to Maximo Joe's Cafe. Brought to you by Bonetti. This week in the cafe, we're going to have a good time. Hello, welcome to Maximo Joe's Cafe. Brought to you by Bonetti. I am Joe Russell, a certified reliability leader and principal consultant at Bonetti. I'm a retired U.S. Navy engineer, as well as a practitioner of reliability for IBM Maximo since 1997. What I hope is this will be a continuing platform to discuss everything Maximo and best business practices. Each week I will provide a topic, some good to know end user ideas, and hopefully do this in a way we all can grow. This week in the cafe, we're going to be talking about labor management best business practices. And then we're going to go into working with labor in Maximo. What is labor management best business practices? Well, we can break that up into a couple areas. I'm, I'm just looking at the differences between facilities and production or manufacturing because you handle your labor and your time management differently because their goals are different. So if we're taking uh, talking about facilities, okay, there's an old saying, plan your work and work your plan. Basically, this is just saying, if you don't have a starting point of what you want to do and a plan to get to where you want to go, you're just going to be basically lost in the forest, looking for the trees. I have a good rule of thumb that I try to use. And if we're talking about facilities, it's the 20-20-60 rule. Basically, the biggest chunk is the 60%. Well, the 60% of your labor hours that are available to you should be focused on planned maintenance work, preventive maintenance, however you want to talk about it, because there's a number of nomenclatures out there. But basically, you're looking in the future and what do you need to do to maintain your equipment in a properly working environment and uh, to get the most bang for your buck is what you're looking at. Okay, then we look at uh, the other stuff. We're talking about 20% is project related. So that's f looking towards the future. So you have preventive maintenance, which is maintaining the equipment that you have at a certain decided level. You have project work, which is trying to do long-term projects for improvement of your facilities to make things better, cost savings, stuff like that. And then what you have is unplanned time. Unplanned time is basically there's nothing on the docket written down formally. But you can use this time for like training, group meetings, opportunistic work that needs to be done. Busy work is what they used to call it. So why do we start with these numbers? Well, the number one reason is to try to guarantee as much as possible that your planned maintenance will be completed on schedule. And why is that important is because an effective plan maintenance program is the number one factor for your uptime availability of all your resources and to do this at the lowest cost possible. As I said, 20% of the time is planned project work. That gives you some flexibility for long-term improvement. It's not stuff that has to be done today, okay? It could be some of these day-to-day -day projects that you want to do, like replacing handrails that are, are getting old or something. They're, they're not a safety hazard right now, but you want to put a new style in and improve the safety conditions of your plant. This is a baseline goal, okay? And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about it allows you the flexibility and enough available time that if an emergency comes up, if a, f a major failure happens. It gives you the opportunity to be flexible with your time, but still maintain your number one goal, 
which is your planned maintenance, and then be able to take care of your emergencies that, as they arise, and so everything works out that way. And granted, like I said, this is a baseline. As far as best business practices go, there's really no such thing as a technical best business practice. What best business practices are is what's best for your facility and, and like facilities that fall into dealing with the same type of issues. So um, you basically can c collaborate with other similar facilities and say, well, how are you doing this? How are you doing taking care of this issue? And then come up with some best business practices that make sense, that make common sense to your uh, facility moving forward. One of the good things about this is once you get your management of your labor hours in, in con you've got control of that, now you'll be able to look at, do you have the right number of laborers or assets available to maintain your facility as you, as you want? Um, you don't have a lot of people just standing around waiting for the, waiting for a issue to show up. Um, if you expand your facilities, you have the history behind you and some s set rules that say, okay, well, if we're going to add 20% equipment to the facility, now we have the numbers to say, well, how many people do we have to hire in the future and train to maintain that equipment at the proper level? And on the reverse side, if you have too many people, then you can take and justify, okay, we only need this many. A lot of facilities I've seen and, and factories, they try to move towards this lean maintenance management process. And sometimes that's a good idea. And sometimes all it does is delay the needed work until there is a major failure, which in the long run costs them more money anyways. Okay, so if we're talking about production or manufacturing, the rules change just a little bit. And the reason why is because your technicians and your goals in a production environment are different than a facilities environment. Because the number one goal of your production is to make product. Keep your equipment up so you can meet those demand of the product as the market grows and so if you're always breaking down and you're not able to produce enough product to meet the need of your customers they're going to go somewhere else so that said we balance this uh out a little different we basically say 50 percent of your technician's time is unplanned time okay you'll do 20 percent project work for long-term projects and improvement and then you'll do 30% for planned maintenance. Like I said, the major reason why this is, is as those plants are running, you need that technician to be available to keep that plant running. So if there's a, a small breakdown or adjustment or something happens in production that you have to take care of, it has to be taken care of immediately. It's an emergency. And that's the way most, most uh, production manufacturing uh, companies treat this because it is an emergency and you don't have to take and plan out how to fix that emergency you just go in there and and do what you need to do so that allows the technician that time available that's not planned to take care of those operational type of um, work orders also as far as preventive maintenance. Um, most planned maintenance is accomplished during scheduled downtime of the production line. So all your major uh, preventive maintenance is taken care of then. Although sometimes you have uh, shift or daily tasks that can be considered maintenance category. So we like to set uh, a goal of 30% of your maintenance should be scheduled during that day or balanced out so it's 30 percent. So today we're going to be talking about working with labor. 
Okay, so there's basically four apps that we're going to look at today in general. We're going to look at the labor application, the crafts, calendars, and assignment manager. All these applications work together to allow you to use the assignment manager so you can actually see how much work is assigned to each person per day and you can make those adjustments on that screen to only do a certain amount of hours in a certain amount of days. So that helps you balance out your your goals as far as planning your work. So as we said before, depending on if you're a facilities or manufacturing, that dictates how you want to balance out your labor's time as far as preventive maintenance. So here we are in a demo version of Maximo. I've already set up these applications here in our training apps, Labor, Crafts, Calendars, and Assignment Manager. So we're going to just go ahead and go to Assignment Manager. At the top you have all of your work orders. All of these can be filtered by site, by all your advanced search features, so you can see what work that you're trying to assign. And then you have your available labor and crew list below. So one thing that I wanted to show you is if we look at Alan Ball, who is an electrician, he is in the day shift, and as you see, available hours for his work weeks have been pre-calculated through the calendar and the shift that he's on. And this shows you how much available time is left for each day to be assigned. So in this we can take and adjust these as needed by modifying the assignments. And in here we can take and modify availability. So if he's off one day we can take and select that day and say that he's on vacation or he's take he's sick and he's not going to be there that day so we can go ahead and do stuff like that we can also modify work days as far as start and end dates and the reason why but the whole goal is to have your work crew listed here at the bottom and all of their available time left that has not been assigned so I can also take and look at assignments and see what he's working on and how many hours have been allocated to this. Okay, so let's go back to the Start Center. How do you set all this stuff up? Well, first of all, if we go to the labor records and we search for Ball, on his labor record, we're going to make sure that he is assigned a calendar and assigned a shift. Okay, that way we can tie that calendar to this labor and it shows available time that's uh, that's on the assignment manager. We also have in here crafts. So he is an electrician. So these are the key things that you want to make sure you put in place so you can effectively manage his assignments and his availability. Another thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the calendars. And the calendar that I'm using right now is called day. So if I look at the day shift calendar, there's a start end date and as you see here there's available hours during those shifts during that day that have been assigned if I look at them I can see the shifts that are included in this time so if I have a day and night shift I can put those both on this calendar and say exactly when the start and end time is you can also have the ability to put in with the newer version of Maximo lunch breaks or every two hours you get 15 minute break you can add that into the calendar now where you used to not be able to so if I go to define shifts I see the shift pattern is Monday through Friday you can also take and add in breaks you can add in break times when you're defining the calendar also we'll go back to the start and we'll go back to assignment manager and again, we'll go into Assignment Manager. You can take and sort and filter. Go to Advanced Search. Go to the Field List. 
You can see looking for Bedford. I can look for the status of the work orders and I want only to see approved work orders and I click on find and that sorts out all that stuff. I can also take and filter this list to see all of my awaiting assignments. This means the work order is approved. It has a planned craft that has not been assigned to a specific labor. I can always go back and to the work order in work order tracking and look at the plans and I can see that this is electrical and mechanical. I can look at assignments that have been assigned. I see ball is assigned here. So in conclusion, Maximo can allow you to plan out your work on a daily level with your available labor and to see how much available time they have left in their workday. Thank you very much. Now we come to the end of this episode of Maximo Joe's Cafe. Remember, I want to thank you for stopping by. Please like, comment, and visit our webpage at Benetti.com. And feel free to uh, ask any questions if you need more uh, information in more detail about how you can use your Maximo better. Please do not hesitate to contact Bonetti. Thank you very much and have a great day.